Welcome to the second half of the semester. I uh, hope you've been enjoying the project management course and picking up some uh, some great life skills as we've gone through. Um, <coughs> the document I've got open in front of us here is the syllabus. And uh, the syllabus talks through all the things that we're going to do in the course. And um, what we have here in the syllabus is a week-by-week -week breakdown of, of the specific uh, things that we're going to do. Now, assignment three, what I'm asking is, Let's use the skills that we've developed in the course so far. Let's use these skills to build a plan for the rest of this semester. So the plan is your plan on your courses, the things that you will do for you to be successful in all your courses. And uh, what I've done is I've basically, I've, I've got an example plan here just for the project management piece. You obviously have other courses, uh, so yours will be a lot bigger. Um, <clears throat> but this is uh, just to give you an idea of the types of things that I'm looking for. So. I used the syllabus to build mine, and if I go to Microsoft Project, basically what I have here at a summary task level, I have um, uh, project management, and you you may have some additional tasks, right? So you might have, uh, you know, something called the full semester, uh, which would include project management, but maybe it also has uh, advanced, advanced, uh, advanced web. Um, maybe you have your Gen Ed, you know, um, uh, advanced OO, uh, maybe you have advanced uh, DB, I'm not sure all the different courses you have at the moment, but this is the idea. So I'm going to show you really just the project management piece of this. And when I open it up, <coughs> I broke it into three sections. I have my regular coursework, which is the week in, week out type of stuff, which is going to follow the syllabus really closely. So if I expand on that, I can see, you know, I read the chapter before the class. Okay, read a chapter and then attend the class. And you can see the classes here, they are manually scheduled. That's what this little thumbtack's representing, manually scheduled. And reading the chapter, I put that as auto scheduled. And in fact, I clicked, if I double click, I picked here under advanced, Make sure it's as soon as possible. That's the default. So likely, if you pick auto schedule, it'll do that for you. And the nice thing about this is that it will it will uh, uh, fit these tasks in where you have time. Okay. So that's how I built up. Read the chapter, attend the class. Read the chapter, attend the class. So that's my regular coursework. And if I wanted to sort of do a quick sanity check to think, do I have all my classes listed here? I can go up here, right? So I got a little drop down menu, go to filters. Oops, custom filters. And in here, I could say contains the word class. And then it's going to show me just the, just the tasks that had the word class in it. Now you can imagine if you had all of your classes here, right, for all your six courses or five courses, you'd be able to see them all at a glance. And I can see, let's see, 12, 19, 26, December 3rd, 11th. Uh, so it looks like I've got most of them, although that one's a Friday, so it should really be 10th. And uh, then I've got the final exam here. Okay, so um, that I can't see because I didn't label it as a class. I labeled it as an exam. But that's the idea. And if I want to turn off my filter, all I'm going to do is select all and say okay. And the filter's gone. Now I can see everything again. Um, <coughs> the next section was project work. So what projects do I have on the go in this course? So in all of your courses, you may have one, two, three projects on the go. Uh, for example, in advanced web, maybe you have your final submission, but you have uh, weekly submissions, or you, you have things you need to build, like high-level components of, of the total project. So you're going to build tasks for each of those. And if you think that you know some of those tasks are going to be uh, done over several days, maybe you break them into like, well, I'll put one hour in per day type of tasks, but you allocate time for yourself to work on these things. So in the case of this project, I said, well, I have to build the project plan, which is the document we're currently looking at. And uh, you know, I said, you could probably do that in two or three hours, put whatever amount of time makes sense for you. And you can see over here in this first information column, I actually, if I hover over this, it says, this task has a finish no later than constraint. So it's auto-scheduled, which means I can do it whenever I have Slack, um, but it must be done by the 19th, because that's when it's due. 
And the way you can set that, if I double click, it goes in and you have all these different tabs, right? You can set the name and all these different things. But if I go to the advanced tab, my constraint is called finish no later than, and I can pick a date. So in this case, it's due on the 19th. So I said finish no later than. Okay, and you can see it tells me, well, I can start that right away, but I gotta finish it before the 19th. And then each week, I have a weekly report to submit. So build and submit weekly report. Um, and these really are gonna be small, They're probably gonna be half an hour, um, depending on the person, but you, know, you can allocate a little bit of time for that. So in terms of building the plan, this is the scaffolding of, of really um, the things I need. The last little bit here is the exam. And again, uh, you know, each person has their own um, process for studying for exams. So first thing I, I thought about, it, well, what are the potential test questions, right? What could this crazy JW guy ask us? Uh, go through the textbook, search the web, what are some things? Go through my notes from class. So you see, I have these different tasks because, you know, sometimes what I've done in the past, I've actually tried to write my own exam. What could the teacher possibly ask us? I'll write some questions down and I'll try them. Um, uh, review the notes from class. Maybe I'll spend two, three hours doing that. Um, and redo any calculations within class. For example, earn value per critical path calculations. Anything that might be possible for to, to be on the exam, I might put it on there as things to redo, just to refresh my memory. And then I'd allocate a little bit of time right before the exam to say, here's my final prep. And then lastly, write the exam. Now, if I expand everything, so I'm gonna go to view, outline, all subtasks. I can see some of these tasks have these little red characters on them. And what that means is, if I go here to resources, resource names, I've assigned myself to the tasks. And this is key when you're working on Microsoft Project. Assign people to tasks, never to summary tasks. Okay? Anything bold that I can do that with is a summary task should never put names or predecessors at this level. It doesn't, um, it, it, there's a lot of things that happen under the hood, but the, the short version of this is it will not calculate, um, it will not calculate things like cost and availability correctly if you do that. And then, um, so if I wanna fix that problem, I can go to resources, level all. So, uh, we were just talking about uh, adding um, uh, names and stuff. Uh, you should avoid uh, putting them at the summary task level. So the next thing here, so you're going to assign yourself to all of these tasks and you're going to level uh, the resources, right? So uh, we just finished with the level all and that will move things around. Anything that's auto scheduled, it can move around inside of the, uh, inside of the plan to make it fit. Now, in terms of the actual um, time that you're available, everyone has different working times. Okay? So you can see here, the default work week is going to be eight hours a day, and it assumes Monday to Friday. Maybe that's not really your schedule. So you can go in here, for example, maybe you do put in a few hours Sunday afternoon, and that's just your regular thing. So you can say, well, you know what, on Sundays, I'm available to work from you know, 2 to 4 p.m. I put in a couple hours on Sundays, and uh, Mondays maybe I only work 10 to 1, right? I attend a class, whatever, and then I have a part-time job, so I don't have time for school those days. And you can go through each day of the week and set these. You say okay, right? And then it can, it will, it will auto adjust anything that's manually or sorry, auto uh, scheduled. It'll adjust to fit things in, and if you still get some uh, over allocation pieces, then you just again you go to resource level. And you'll be good. So now we're all set. We have uh, we have our class. We have our coursework, our project work. We have exam prep. Um, so now, what else do we need to know? Well, one of the things is I said let's figure out what this is worth to you. Okay, what are you investing in yourself this semester? So to see that information, I'm going to go view resource sheet and under uh, my resource here. We've got $20 per hour. And that's what I want you to pay you yourself. Pay yourself $20 an hour for investing in your education. And then we can go to the cost sheet here. And you, you'll get a summary of the total cost of your project. 
or um, I click on the Gantt chart and then back to cost. Um, now I can see the total cost and I can actually see a breakdown of the cost for each thing. So you could, for example, um, you could look at the cost of your project management course versus your advanced web. You know, and you can start to think about how much am I investing time-wise in each of these courses? And you can even use that to make decisions. For example, um, I'm just going to pick on Gen Ed, uh, which I shouldn't do, but um, let's say you, you were spending uh, you know, five times the cost, time cost, in uh, the Gen Ed course than you were in the Advanced Web course. Right? Then you might say to yourself, does that make sense? Like, this is more where my career is going, and this is a sideline um, rounding me out. So, you know, you might you might make some decisions there if your if your grades were uh, suffering, uh, you had to make some decisions. Now you've got information to make decisions with. But uh, but this is great because now we can really start to break it down, and you can look at well, what's this exam in terms of my time costing me? Okay. Um, so a lot of data in here, and <coughs> as we go through the course. Your weekly report, here's what you're going to do each week. Let's do outline and show all the tasks. So each week what I want you to do is go up to this start, this start column here. And I'm going to do the drop down. And I'm going to look at all the tasks that should have started. So today is November the 12th. So everything that should have started by November 12th. I'm going to say OK. And this shows me all the tasks here that should have started. And let's add a column called percent complete. I'm going to drag it over here. And what I want you to do each week is to go through, and if you've started a task but you haven't finished it, I want you to say you're 20% complete. If you have finished the task, so for example, if I've read the entire chapter and I feel good about the content, I'm going to mark it at 100% complete. Uh, in this case, attended the class. Well, of course you were there. No one was dare skip my class. Uh, so that's 100% complete. And I could have started reading chapter 8. Um, so I'm going to give that 20%. And then I have my project plan. Well, of course, I've only done one of the courses in my project plan. So I've started it, but it's not complete. So I'll put it at 20%. So now I have a lot of information available to me. And we can take this one step further. If I go to tables, so I'm in view, tables, cost. Now I can look at it and I can say reading uh, chapter 7 on the project management, um, oh, look at this, I did a bad thing, I didn't set my baseline yet. Uh, shame on me. Okay, hang on, I'm going to go back. Let's go back, let's set these back down to zero. As soon as we had the cost, we should have set a baseline. So to do that, I'm going to go project, set baseline. Okay. So what this does is the baseline again, that is a snapshot in time. So at the start of this project, okay, the start of the second half of the semester, here's what I felt I planned to invest in my my education. $890. Yours is probably going to be 6,000 or 10,000 or something like that. So, um, let's go back. So I said this one was done. Okay. And you can see what's great here is, now I can see the total, my full semester is 11% complete. My project management course, I've completed 14% of the second half. I've got uh, some stats. I kind of know where I stand. You know, imagine if you had like uh, one of those pesky parents that was coming and asking you, "Well, are you studying?" Well, now you can actually show them. Yeah, I am. Here's proof. <laughs> so, not that anyone has a pesky parent, of course. Um, so uh, here we go. Um, <clears throat> now I have my baseline cost, and I can actually put in what were my actual numbers. What did I really plan to spend, or what did I actually spend? So. Um, maybe this chapter eight is really complicated. So instead of instead of it being um, maybe I've invested uh, uh, seventy dollars so far. Oops, I guess it wants to be a little more complete. 
So let's say uh, I've really invested seventy dollars. I can put that type of information in there. I can I can uh, I can modify these um, when they're percent complete is only 20 it, it's I guess assuming uh, that my cost shouldn't be more than 20 percent of this number um, <clears throat> but once you have something done you can put in whatever your actual was so if you had for example advanced web uh, maybe when you first looked at the assignment um, you assumed it was going to take you 20 hours and when you kept track of it you realized it was actually like 45 hours or something like that so you want to put the actual in here, and it'll help you with your estimates over time, and that's a real skill uh, that you do need to develop. Um, whether you want to boom or not, it's true, you need it. It'll really help you. So now we can look at things like earned value, right? The budgeted cost of work performed, right? Often client, we usually call that the earned value. So I've, I've earned almost $200 of value. According to the schedule, I should have earned $230 worth of value. So compared to what I originally planned, this is telling me I'm, I'm basically uh, a little under the amount of work I planned or could have achieved. So my SPI, 0.86, that makes sense. I'm a little behind what I could have been. And my cost performance index, because I said some of these things cost more than originally planned in terms of time, I'm a little under on my cost performance index. So that's basically what I need you to report in the weekly in, in your weekly summaries. What did I achieve since the last week? What am I going to do next week? And what's my CPI and SPI? And if these things are less than one, whatever you've got in your plan, you're basically a little behind schedule. So this one's the one that's really going to cost you, the SPI. Okay, so you have to watch it carefully. Um, what else can I tell you about the assignment? Uh, let's go to view, entry. Um, if you're looking at this like it might be a daunting amount of work, it's not because, uh, again, you're going to filter for whatever the current, up to the current date. And then you're also going to filter for things that are not 100%. So if something's 100% done, you don't need to look at it anymore. So you can filter them out. So now, in this case, I only have one thing left on my on my plan that I need to even look at. Okay? Build the project plan. Or uh, I could reverse this. I could say, well, what have I what have I finished? I want to put that into the report. Now I can say, well, I read chapter seven, I went to this class, right? So for the report, you could just give me bullet points. I don't need a lot of detail. And I think you're going to find that it's, it's actually oddly satisfying to say something's 100% done. I hope you really enjoy this assignment. I hope it's a, uh, 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 you know, a, a life skill um, that will help you over time. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come see me, and uh, we'll get them figured out. Thank you.